another episode of Piping Talks. Um, and today we have a, a piper, uh, originally from Canada, but now based in Glasgow uh, in Scotland, um, Elliot McDonald from, uh, where, where are you from exactly? Where were you grew up? Yeah, so I grew up in Saskatchewan, so in the middle of Canada. Right, so that's where the prairies. That's where your your family grew up. You grew up there, and you spent most of your childhood there. Yeah, I lived here right until I went to university, and then I moved to Nova Scotia. Ah, got it. Okay, so we, I think we definitely met at the Tods or in Glasgow at some point. Um, but uh, this is fun because I, I I think I had someone previously that I didn't know too much before. So it was good to kind of like ask the questions and, and get to know the the, uh, the person. So I'm excited about this episode. Um, so Ellie play for, she's playing currently for Scottish Pirate Pie Ben, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and yeah, we'll, uh, yeah we'll, we'll hear all about it. Her family, from what I know, is quite uh, known in, in the scene, Pie Ben scene in Canada. So I'm excited to, to hear about it as well. And uh, yeah, just just chat. So um, you're back home in Canada now. That's correct. You just mentioned that to me. Yeah, I'm coincidentally home visiting. So I'm I'm in Saskatchewan right now. Yeah. Got it. Cool. And yeah. uh, how like what's the story? How did you start playing the pipes in the first place? Yeah. So it is a bit random. Um, both my parents are pipers, also. Um, so they grew. That's how they met. My mom. Or my dad was my mom's piping teacher. Um, <laughs> they're five years apart. So she was like 12 or something when she started taking lessons from him. Um, yeah, so my dad started playing because my gran loved pipes. And, you know, we're, I'm like ninth generation Canadian or something. Um, uh, so they've been here a long time, but there's lots of carry on. Uh, of the tradition, I guess. So my grand was really keen. So my dad played and then on my mom's side, her grandparents are from Cape Breton. And so there's lots of the sort of tradition there. And so her, all my mom's siblings um, played in pipe bands or played pipes or drums or whatever. Wow. Yeah. The whole so family. They met, they met that way. So I played just because I don't even, I don't, I don't know. I just, it, was what we did, I guess. Were you? Do I don't you, ever remember thinking I'm going to play pipes. I just, oh, like it just, like of course I was going to. Oh right, right, right. Did you feel like yeah. um you you had to or or like you started taking lessons from your dad? I imagine, and then you're like, wow, I'm really enjoying it. Oh uh, no, I never felt like I had to. I just it was always around. So my dad taught lessons in the house when I was a kid, and my dad, well, bo both my mom and dad have run the grade two pipe band here for 30, 30 years, I guess. Oh, wow. So the, our house is like a revolving door of people coming in, getting bags tied or new reeds or uniform parts or whatever. So it was like just all consuming my whole life. <laughs> wow. So yeah. you were part of the band from like, you know, year zero and you just like grew up around all of these people coming in. Yeah, it was kind of funny because so my parents played an SFU in the 80s and into the 90s and then they moved home right before i was born and started the grade two band here so the band is exactly the same age that i am oh. so i was born in october and my first games was a bus trip to brandon in like february or something so that, yeah my first island games i was like <laughs> only a few months old that is funny that's a nice <laughs> way to say i'm as old as the band that you know my parents started um so how come your so your parents were living in in bc before or that's where they, they were before uh, you were born is your dad from there yeah no so they both they both grew up in regina also um or in saskatchewan and then yeah my so my dad's always piping spin is his thing right he, he lived in glasgow um in for two years in the like 1979 and 81 or something and he was over there playing in um, Renfrew pipe band and getting lessons from Don McLeod. And so he would go over and he had no money, he'd just eat Mars bars and play bagpipes. And um, then he moved back and that's when my mom and dad got married. And my mom was a really great piper. Well, she still is a good piper. And so they both then moved to Vancouver to play in SFU. God. That was sort of why they why they moved there. Uh, yeah. I'm glad they you were there for for many years i'm glad you're saying um 
she still is good paper. You said she was, and then you were like, she is a good paper. Um, yeah. And then, so uh, you grew up around, you know, surrounded with everyone coming in and out of the house and kind of like learning the pipes and um, you picked up the pipes. And then you said we moved to uh, Nova Scotia, right? Uh, how old were you at that time? Like, were you uh, going for university or was it something different? Yeah, so I... When I finished high school, that's when I moved to Nova Scotia. So I would have been 17 or 18. Um, so 2011. It was actually the same year that Alex took over the grade one band there. Uh, it was the year that I moved there. So his first season as pipe major was my first season in the band. Um, so I, yeah, I've learned so much from him over the years. And then yeah. you, were you um, like, uh, you know, transitioning fast forward to today, like at the time was piping, you know, your like main hobby? Was it something that you were so passionate about? You were potentially trying to make a career out of it or you always knew that, you know, this was a side gig and you, you wanted to do something else? Yeah, it's kind of, I don't know. It's kind of, so uh, piping is, is a hobby for me. It's like, I don't work as an instructor or anything. Um, but it always has been a huge driver in terms of make decision making in my life. So when I moved to Halifax, um, it was in in large part because of because of the band and Alex. And at the time, I had been taking Skype lessons from Bruce Gandy, also. Um, so I wanted to move out there because of the pipe band. The other place, of course, considering Vancouver, but it was a Halifax seemed like the right city for me, and also. Um, Nova Scotia with my mom's side, the sort of Cape Breton connection. It was mm -hmm. exciting the opportunity to go there. We grew up also listening to lots of Cape Breton music and and so on. So I was, I liked it out there and we had gone out there on holidays too. So, but anyway, that, uh, that's, that's tangent. Um, but yeah, so I, in my decision making, I mean, I went to university for a decade. Yeah. Uh, and I only now, in the last two years, have actually started working um, post university <laughs> and in my decision making about where I was going to go. I knew Glasgow was on the radar um, because see. of pipe bands. So yeah, even even back when I finished high school, I had I was so keen to move to Glasgow and um, play pipe bands, but going to university over there as an international student would have been very expensive. Mm -hmm. um, so it was just uh, balance, balancing those things. That's interesting. So you, I love that you're explaining it how it actually it, it was not something you wanted to do as a living, but it definitely influenced like you moving to Nova Scotia in the first place. And then you had Glasgow as like, what were, I imagine you grew up going to Glasgow every year for the worlds, right? And you were like, this is a city I want to be in because there's opportunity for playing in a band and, and have a career. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I went my first trip over to Scotland. I was eight years old, I think. Wow. I was also a Highland dancer for many years. Um, so our family holidays, we go over for almost the whole month of August, because we go over for the world and then stay for the like cow the world Highland dancing championships. Um, and it was really fun. We go to all the little Highland games um, throughout Scotland all through August and wow. dance and play solos and yeah, it was fun. That's that's awesome. I mean, I picture, I don't know, uh, you have a brother, you have two brothers or one brother? I have two brothers. Two brothers. Yeah. So the whole family just yeah. traveling to Scotland for a month and just uh, it's crazy. That's awesome. Yeah, it's chaos. It's a lot of instruments because it's my parents are pipers. I'm a piper. And then I have two brothers. So Ruri is two years younger than me. He's a tenor drummer. And then we have, a, I have another, we have another brother um, who's 11 years younger than me. So he just is 18 and now uh, away to university but does uh, he play yeah yeah he's also a piper yeah oh he's also a piper mm -hmm. you guys should create a band or something um <laughs> a band together um and i didn't know you did highland dancing um and you, did you feel like you had to um pick at some point you know between playing the pipes uh you know in a great one band or 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 doing highland dancing or were you able to like continue doing both um uh, um uh, throughout your youth yeah, so I don't know. I, I had a lot more energy when I was younger <laughs> than I do now. But I, I always dancing was my number one thing. I loved dancing. I was very passionate about it and driven to work hard. And piping I enjoyed, but I 
I wasn't as motivated to work hard. I just like did enough to not embarrass myself when I was playing solos and playing in the band. Um, and yeah, so I played in the kids band here and then joined the grade two band. Um, and so there was a few years where I was, so I joined the grade two band when I was 13, but I was also the pipe major of the kids band and I was dancing. Wow. So there would be days where I'd like play solos, like in whatever, like whatever amateur grade, um, dance the Highland Dancing Championship and then play in the afternoon with the, the grade two band and the, the junior band. It was wild. But eventually the decision was made for me because I was, became injured. So when I was sort of 17 in grade 11, um, in 2010, I, yeah, my ankle became really injured and so I couldn't dance really anymore. It was just too painful. So then I focused all my energy into piping and that's when I started um, with the lessons from Bruce uh, every week on Skype. And that, yeah, I became see. sort of my focus. I always sort of knew eventually piping, like I've always loved pipe bands and so on, but yeah, I knew eventually my dancing time would run out. And then I'd have lots of years left for piping. And you have to move to piping. Um, I love that you say I'm, I love bands. Um, you know, I've talked to, I don't know, 15 people so far, and you have pipers that are very, you know, band oriented and some that are very solo oriented and, and they love doing the solos over the band. Would you consider yourself more of like, you know, playing solos that you have more fun playing solos or you have more fun playing in a band? Yeah, I have... I've always loved playing in the band and I, I mean, I like playing solos too. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's, it's fun when you're like part of a team. I think also my job is really stressful and I make a lot of decisions and it takes a lot of thought. And so there's something really nice about playing in a band because it, it's actually not very hard. Like you, <laughs> you just have to do what you're told, you know, uh, if you like practice, keep your pipes going and like pay attention it, it's you don't make decisions right i don't have to set up set up my pipe like you keep them going but you don't you don't make any of the big decisions you just do what you're told mm -hmm. and so that's kind of that's kind of liberating nice <laughs> i uh, <laughs> that's funny you said that i was talking to um a leading drummer uh last week and um uh, eric mcneil to not name him but he went from being a leading drummer for a long time to being uh, a core member at sfu for a few years and uh and the change of like being responsible and having to make all the decisions and making sure the team is happy versus you know just walking in and being able to play with other people without worrying too much um about leading was actually a, a nice thing for him a nice break so imagine going off work and going into band practice not have to worry about anything must be a nice thing yeah it's it's in many ways some of my favorite hours of the week because um they're the only hours where I don't feel like, oh, I should probably be working or getting something done. Right. Uh, I, all I all I have to do in those hours is think about playing pipe. So it's pretty great. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so, um, you know, moving on into, uh, you did a few years um, in Halifax and you played in um, Alex Paint for a number of years. And uh, when was the the transition or the move to Glasgow like you said it was always something you've been thinking about you obviously travel to Glasgow every year for for the walls um where you like um you felt like at one point you were ready to make the move or it happened because of uh, you know you finished school or what was the decision making and you being like okay I'm ready let's do it let's go yeah it was kind of as as soon as I could in some ways um I mean, I, I, so I did an undergrad degree and I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but I knew that I loved science. Um, and so I just kept doing science. I start, joined and I loved being in Halifax. I, at that time, I wasn't ready to leave Halifax because it, it is probably, I hate to say it while I'm in Saskatchewan, <laughs> but I think it's my favorite city in the world. Oh, wow. Maybe, maybe just in Canada. Halifax and Glasgow are just the best places. Um, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But so I wasn't ready to leave Halifax when I finished my undergraduate degree in 2015. So I started grad school and then that's just how long it took. And so what, as soon as I was done my PhD, I was absolutely ready to, to move somewhere else. And I had been sort of scheming for a few years, um, looking at research positions in Glasgow. 
so that I could be doing work that I was excited about, but living in Glasgow so I could play in a band. Right, yeah. right, right. You're trying to tie so, the, the science aspect and, and playing in a band and being in Glasgow all together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah. Um, yeah if, I, if I was moving just for science, I probably would have moved to Germany. There's a research group there that I've worked closely with. They're doing cool stuff. But it, uh, it was, yeah, you know, finding the balance. So I'm doing work that I enjoy too now. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. playing in a band. Wow. Um, was it, um, you know, I um, talked to a few people that were not from the UK and then are now living in the UK. And it was quite challenging for them to, um, you know, move and uh, move to the UK for a number of years. Was it challenging for you or because of the your family background, it was sort of easier to sort of make the move from like a visa perspective and, and stuff like that? Mm, yeah. So from a visa perspective, that's where my job is key. Um, I, I have a work visa because they wanted me to work there. <laughs> Nice. So that that's that's important. Yeah, it um it makes it really easy. My my job is I'm very very lucky with the job that I have. Got it. Um, they're really yeah they're supportive and so they they funded my visa and my move and very cool everything for me to come over. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that mm -hmm. that helps. It's uh it's not a topic I like to talk about necessarily, but I'm always curious because you know, uh, you moved from uh, Canada all the way to, to Scotland, although you knew the country and you knew the city, it's still, it's still a major move that you have to, you know, pack your life and, and then just go. Um, what, what like, so now you're um, playing for Scottish Power. Is it your second year or third year? Like, when did you move to, to Glasgow in the first place? Yeah, so I moved in January of 2021. So this will be, this January is, start of my third year at living in um, Glasgow but I actually didn't join Scottish Power until September of 2021 um, or October just because like there was nothing happening pipe band wise mm -hmm. um, and so I, I sort of just was getting my feet on the ground in my job and and living and getting the ball rolling mm -hmm. in terms of life and then that's when I was like okay let's figure out this pipe band thing so this is only my this is the start of my second season. Got it. With Scottish Power. Mm -hmm. What, what, um, you know, I like to ask that too. Like, why, um, Scottish Power? Did you have any tie with Chris or people from the band, or uh, was it a tough decision, or was were you always like, I'm a huge fan of the band and the music that they play? Yeah, I mean, I, I have always loved Scottish Power. The music is is awesome. Um, so my brother Ruri played in Inverary mm -hmm. um, for many years, and so that was that's sort of his thing. Um, but I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, when I was a kid, also coming over to Scotland um, every summer, uh, there were a few things like Chris's um, Extreme album came out when I was like I don't know ten or something, maybe a little older, eleven, twelve, uh, and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. I like had my little 20 pound note and I bought his CD and I took it home and um, listened to it a million times. So I've always, you know, been thought, thought he's great. And then um, also one big thing for me was they played Mary McLeod um, in a medley early on, like, I don't know, 2006 or seven would, would have been the first time they played that Mary McLeod bit in the medley. And that was my keyboard that I was playing in solos at the time. So I was like, this is, this is so cool. Uh, yeah, and I don't know, like the Castle Dangerous thing was cool. And then I went to the concert in 2011. I think that was also 2011. Uh, and that was like the best pipe band concert I've ever been to, I think. Probably because it, with they had the full orchestra and they mm -hmm. were playing B-flat chanters in the second half. So it was really inventive and just amazing. And they, yeah, so they played Mary McLeod with the whole orchestra um so it's just i've always just thought that music's pretty cool like the, the flame of wrath and like too yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's so, uh, it's funny how like um you know maybe i don't know if chris will think about it but you know the music that you put out there you know sometimes you think it's for the next competition or you know trying to win but um, you know, many years after Extreme, for example, that album you're talking about, I mean, I was listening to it too, and that's how you, you know the person. Mm -hmm. um, so you never know the music that you guys are playing right now. Maybe someone 
in many years will be like, I remember when you guys were playing this, I was growing up and it was awesome. And that's why I wanted to join the band. So it's funny how like in a span of many years, you get excited about things. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And actually there's one more thing I should say um, when talking about what bands that my friend of mine, Stephen Blake suggested also that Scottish Power would be perfect because Chris's approach is so scientific. And it's true, like the way that he thinks about um, reeds and instruments and setups and uh, temperature and humidity and all of these things is is super methodical and scientific and well thought out. He's got like spreadsheets and whatever. So that's very much up my alley. Um, that is I, I like funny. That. So yeah, it's perfect. I'm a scientist and his approach is scientific. I know. So. I know. And that's, <laughs> um, that's a great way of... Um, uh, advocating for a band like you know your friend saying you should join this band and most people would say you know my buddy plays in it or you know um i think they can win or you know um these guys are cool but it was actually because that person knew who you were or who you are as a person and 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 the approach of of chris in the band i think that's brilliant do you feel like you're also approaching um, your practices or, you know, the way you maintain your pipes, do you feel like it's, it's also quite, you know, scientific and, and, and sort of like organized that way as well? Yeah. I mean, I guess it's all also inspired by Chris and the way that he suggests that we go about it. Um, but yeah, m my brain does sort of work, work that way too. So I've always thought about things in, and, and, you know, Alex, Alex um, Gandhi's approach is fairly scientific too. He's not quite, uh, you know, he's he's uh, not quite as scientific, like it's not a scientific method in, mm -hmm. <laughs> in the same way with Alex, but you know, I learned lots from him too. So, Do you, um, are you, you know, d does this pushes you to think more? I know I've talked to Chris before and, and, and I'm always so impressed with, him thinking about the weather and you know the you know the cover that you guys have and like you know all that kind of stuff which is very out there does this pushes you to maybe um come up with ideas and and work with him on like what could be done differently and what can be done better um well for i'm mostly just am learning from him at this point uh yeah i, I would say yeah I'm mostly just learning from him right now. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm think, thinking about these things myself, but um, I, yeah, I, I, again, like, I like to keep my scientific thinking for work hearts. Yeah, yeah, yeah for work. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, yeah. it's nice to just rock, it's just nice to just rock up and be told what to do. But I mean, I love, we just, we have discussions sometimes at the end of the band, we'll talk about ridiculous things for a long time. But there are a few, a few guys in the band too, like, um, Robbie McIsaac's got his blowpipe and the new humidity pipe cases. So he's an he's well, he's going to school for engineering. Um, so his approach is scientific. So it's kind of a bunch of just a bunch of nerds. It's nice. Pretty fun <laughs> to think about those things. <laughs> just a bunch of yeah. nerds. Um, I, it, how do you you know how was your your parents obviously having played for SFU and you know, when you said, Hey, I'm moving to, I'm moving to Glasgow. And, and then, you know, when you said I'm joining Scottish power, were they, you know, excited or that, you know, what was the reaction? Yeah, they were, they were excited. Um, it's sort of, it's, it's, you know, my parents played in SFU and Rude played in Inverary and I played for a long time in Halifax and, uh, but always, you know, and Halifax is a great band. Like it was such a good opportunity being there for all of those years. Um, but it's a different experience, right? Playing in a Canadian third one band. We we go to the Worlds and the goal would be to qualify. You know, if we qualified for the final, that was exciting. And we, you know, we did the one year. It's like that, that was winning for us was mm -hmm. to be in the final. So it was so, it's very exciting to be in a band where, you know, you're in, you're in the hunt, you're in the race. Mm -hmm. So I think they were, they were just happy for me because um, it's something I've wanted for a long time. So they were, they were just really excited for me. Nice. That's yeah. uh, you touch mm -hmm. a great point. Um, you know, being from Canada and playing for a band in Canada and you go to the worlds, um, you know, it's an investment. It's, it's a once a year competition. I mean, there's Maxville um, that is, you know, pretty big. Um, and then basically you compete for, 
two competition max Vidal on the walls and you have that that pressure and uh and it's a big uh money commitment and travel commitment time commitment um what is the biggest difference that you could compare not level or anything like that but just in the way uh you prepare yourself um you know in glasgow or being in europe now versus when you were in canada did you change anything because now it's you know you have more competition from may to august um is there anything that you change or, or is pretty much the same I mean, it, it's very different, right? Uh, the having all of the majors is it's such a cool thing. Um, yeah, there, there, there's different. There's pros and cons, I think, in both ways. There, there's something really special, I think, about um, being not in Scotland playing bagpipes and competitively because you have a sense of how exciting and uh, I don't know how, like, it, it, you see the the world and pipers here and there, and it's, like, really exciting growing up as a kid, being like, oh, my God, the pipe bands in the world, which I don't know, maybe you do, but I don't know if you get it in the same way in Scotland when it's right there in front of you all the time. Like, if if you had many contests a year where you were seeing these bands in person. But when I was a kid, we'd go to the world, and you're seeing these bands at one time a year, you're like, oh, I've got to hear the medley. Like, and it's like, there's, you know, it's, I'm such a nerd or whatever, but <laughs> it's exciting. So in some ways, it was a really good opportunity to grow up here because then you get perspective on on how cool it is. But then to live over there and to be in one of those bands and then have all the majors, it's it's so fun because, you you know, each at each one, it's building up towards the world. And it's, yeah, it's a really different thing than just flying over and playing at the world. You know, it's such a yeah such a different experience i mean there are pros and cons too right so i've worked the week of the world this year i didn't take it off i didn't think about that which is probably silly um yeah so i didn't do any anything piping live i didn't see anything i just went to band practice and played at the world and that was it and, that was and it. when we're at the world you're just with the band you know so i, I didn't really see anybody or whatever you yeah, felt like it was less of uh that's a good point though because um I'm trying to like remember, but I mean, I was obviously not from Scotland, so I was also traveling, but I would stay for a few months. So it was kind of like I was part of the, you know, I was living in Scotland. But I remember mm -hmm. Week of the Worlds, you would have people or bands coming over from, I don't know, New Zealand, Australia or Canada, um, and you would see them. But you're right that it's because it's like every, not every weekend, but it's like once a month from May to August, it almost like a... Eh, it's just another competition but but for someone in like you know um i mean even new zealand or canada it's like i'm taking two weeks off and i'm traveling like my you know, this is a big deal spending all of my money and all my yeah <laughs> yeah all my savings yeah. uh no but you go there and then you take the the week off at the walls and you're like i want to see i want to see everything right i want to see every concert the the wednesday night concert i want to see everything but if you're in scotland you'd be like yeah i mean i've had Mm, three practices a week like i just want to break and i'm not going to go to the concerts it's it's a very different dynamic i'm glad you're highlighting it because it's true yeah yeah next year i'm definitely gonna take at least some of the week of the worlds off um so i can Enjoy. yeah go see friends and, and so on mm -hmm. yeah did you um yeah. uh so you mentioned your brother played for uh in very was it uh you know obviously you mentioned there was a band that you were like oh you know maybe it, maybe it could be a great band but do you feel like you know you uh it's nice to be different than your brother and play for another band that is as good and and kind of have this reveal right do you guys chat about it yeah, it's funny. Actually, he, I just before I came to talk to you, I was like, "Oh, Rui, is there anything I uh, shouldn't say about you or <laughs> shouldn't say about you or whatever?" And he was like, "The only thing you need to make sure to say is how you've always been jealous of me," <laughs> <laughs> which was pretty funny. And, and it's it's true in a way because um, he's two years younger than me, but he was always very good and very driven. And so he joined the grade two band when he was like ten or something. So it was before me maybe 11, I'm not sure. Um, so he was ahead of me there. And then, you know, he joined in Brary and was doing so well. And uh, it, there was, it was funny in 20, 2014, I think, was it the Inverary concert? I can't remember, but on the same day, 
um, brewery was in Glasgow playing at the Free Worlds concert, the concert hall within Brewery. And in actually here in Regina, um, my mom and dad and Duncan, my youngest brother, who was nine at the time, were playing with Paul McCartney. And so I was like, no what, 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 what have I done wrong here? <laughs> like, what a, what a day for the McDonald family. But I, I was the odd one out. Wait, on the but, same day? So, it was like the same night in August, yeah, the Inverary concert and Paul McCartney. Wow. And Duncan Duncan was nine and he was just so little and cute, but a good piper. And Paul McCartney gave him a shout out. No like, oh, look way. at the little piper over there. Yeah. Oh, wow. So cool. and yeah, and you were like, God damn it. <laughs> I, I was like, what here? have I done wrong? <laughs> that is yeah. funny. Yeah. Um, but no, he, he, I mean, I think in part that's why. I don't know. I'm just. I. It was kind of a Scottish power. Like, yeah, that was. I don't. I didn't really think about it too hard, honestly. Yeah. It was just the right thing, and Inverary was. Just your brother. Yeah, they're yeah. great, but this. Yeah, it was not where I wanted to be. Nice, mm-hmm. nice. You um, you did you ever play with you, you know your brother and your parents in the same band? I imagine, right? Uh, growing up, was the whole family in the band playing at the same time? Yeah. So a few times. Um. So Duncan, actually, all five of us haven't played in the same pipe band before, but different permutations of four of us have. Um, so because Duncan's quite a bit younger. So it, we played in the grade two band together for a long time. My mom was a pipe sergeant. My dad was a pipe major. Rory and I in the band. So lots of years. And then I moved to Halifax and Rory joined in Rory. But then Rory actually, um, well, my parents came to the Halifax grade one band also in 2016 so they've been playing with alex uh in halifax since since then every year in this this season too as fly-in players um and there was one or two seasons maybe 2016 17 can't remember but when rury also played in halifax so the four of us played in halifax um together nice so it was cool and yeah we you know like it uh, when you're at the world, I don't think we played with the world, but it, it was my mom and dad and I all playing in Halifax at the world. So that was in grade one. That was pretty cool. Wow. Cool moment. Um, and then Duncan, I came and played with the grade two band here a few times, just sort of um, for fun, you know, at different Highland games over a few different seasons. So I played with Duncan and mom and dad, the four of us. Wow. The grade two band here. And Ruri's done that, but I wasn't there. So we've never all at the same time. That'll have to happen one day. I'm I sure. was yeah. so that leads me to my my next question per se is is that your favorite memory in, in pipe bands like playing with your mm-hmm. parents at the worlds or do you have another one? Mm-hmm. I don't know if they will listen to 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 that. If they will listen to the episode, you should probably say yes, playing with my parents. Yeah. But. Oh, definitely. That was it. No, that was cool. I will. The, the other memory that it, I mean. It wasn't me playing, but when when Rory won the world in 2019, that was cool. And my whole family was there when he won. Um, we're not, we've not always all been over every summer. Um, so the fact that we were all in Glasgow, it was it was cool. It was yeah, it, it was such a neat moment. I was so happy for him. I just like couldn't stop crying because I was, wow. I was so happy for him. Yeah. So I th- honestly think I, if you know, yeah. It was just, it was a neat moment. Wow. Um, but other than that, I don't know, lots of good moments playing in Halifax. Um, and then I guess the nice full circle moment is, uh, I was so pumped when I got the Scottish power music and <laughs> Mary McLeod was in the medley. I mean, it's come off and on all, since 2006 or whatever year. Um, so to go from being a kid, being like, that's the coolest thing ever to getting to play that in the medley at the Worlds. That was that was pretty cool. Um, playing that medley on the Saturday at the Worlds this year was neat. It was a really like hot day, and mm-hmm. I think everyone felt really good about it when we came off through like through the you know through the tunnel or whatever. It was kind of like oh, everyone really enjoyed that. So it was a really neat yeah a neat moment. And you guys did yeah. pretty well. So um, uh, yeah. from what I remember, so that's awesome. Uh, um, Cool. And then now, you know, we talk piping for, um, you know, quite a bit, but what is it that, you know, you said, I have a scientific mind. Um, what do you do outside of uh, piping? What's, uh, what's your day to day? Yeah, so I do cardiovascular research. Um, so 
yeah, I, I work to understand um, and study cardiovascular disease. So we use experimental uh, model systems, so some animal models, computational models, um, cell lines, and so on to interrogate uh, how things are happening. So for instance, when you have a heart attack, looking at what are the things that are changing on a molecular and genetic level and physiologically that cause and people to go into heart failure. So testing drugs and doing experiments. Wow. And, yeah. Very different. It's fun. <laughs> Very different than thinking. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah. then you were at the, is it a hospital in Glasgow or the school in Glasgow? So I, yeah, I work at the University of Glasgow, um, at, but it's through the British Heart Foundation. So there's a British Heart Foundation Center for Research Excellence, I think it's called. Got it. It's yeah, that's that's where I am. Do you also feel like when you enter the school, it, it looks like Harry Potter? Doesn't isn't yes, it that school? Definitely. Yeah, it's the school so in the West End. Yeah, yeah it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember yeah. growing up and going to Glasgow and be like, I don't know what they do in there, but I'd love to study there just because it looks like Harry Potter. It was kind of funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. and do you feel like you know piping is helping you in a way? I mean, you kind of touched on it, but helping you, you know, kind of like clear your mind. I guess you guys practice twice a week or once a week, probably right yeah. now. Yeah, twice a week. Does, do you think it helps you kind of like? release the stress or just get your minds away from from work is it a nice balance yeah yeah definitely and it's nice you know to have something else to be responsible for you gotta play your pipes every day or most days and you're going to band yeah it's 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 the best for sure i, I love i love playing in the band nice yeah. nice yeah, um it's a lot of fun. and one last sort of question um you know, if you had to pick, obviously you kind of said your favorite tune uh, because you play in the solos and uh, the, the band is playing it. But uh, if you had to pick like one tune uh, or a performance that you've played at or you've heard that you really, really liked um, and, and why is your you know favorite tune or, or performance? Okay, yeah. So, I mean, the Scottish Power of Mary McLeod stuff is cool, but... I have to say when I was, and I talked about the Extreme album, mm -hmm. um, but for me, the number one album when I was a kid was SFU Down Under, so live at Carnegie Hall or Sydney Opera House. Yeah, mm -hmm. Sydney Opera House. Um, that album was, like I, I was, have listened to that album hundreds of times, just <laughs> over and over and over, and I tried to learn it. Um, and I was lucky, like my parents obviously having played in SFU, we had close connections out there, and so I would go out and, um uh take dancing lessons out there with terry lee's daughter fiona as a dancer also so i'd stay at their house and go to dance class but then hang out with alistair and john and stuff through the day so i was always exposed to their uh thoughts on whatever but there was one time i went to sfu band practice when i, I was really little maybe eight or something and i because i loved that album so much T terry knew that i was obsessed and so there, yeah there's a the blue cloud like the big the big jig set at yeah. the end of that album was my favorite thing ever and so then he terry got them to play the big jig set for me and i was just like <laughs> so that, that's maybe it was one of the coolest things ever i was like i was losing my mind yeah oh my god really, actually yeah. that's super cute that's a great um yeah that's a great way to do it because you're, if you're band practice, I don't know how many pipers, but you need to get everyone to play the tune. So, you know, for you, that's a nice gesture. Yeah, it was cool. And I guess also like medley wise, SFU medleys from the early 2000s are just, I, I love them. You know, um, SFU 2004 and 2006, probably my favorites. The, those slow airs are so nice mm -hmm. and the reprises. I, I don't know if it was, it's probably not the first reprise. I don't know when that is, but I think it's one of the one of the first really effective times. Yeah, there was a reprise and a medley, and I, that blew my mind. I, I love those medleys. I still listen to them all the time. Nice. I love that you're, uh, you know, you're not just one band. You're like you play with Scottish Fire. You obviously played for a band in Halifax with Alex, and then um, your brother with Sinverary, and your family with you know SFU. So you're not just tied to one band. You like to listen to 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 every band. Um, mm -hmm. That's a nice touch. What do you um? What's next for you? Like, so obviously this season you're playing with Scottish Power uh, work. Um, are you like anything exciting happening in the next few months? Um, honestly, yeah, not really. Honestly, I, 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 I uh, love 
playing in Halifax for such a long period of time. And I would love to play in Scottish Power as long as I can mm-hmm. and live in Glasgow and keep doing my job. So I, my contract, is, I've still got another three, three uh, years at least that. to go. Um, and I think from there, the hope is I can continue, you know, academia is a whole other topic. But mm-hmm. Hopefully can continue doing research um, in Glasgow will be what I would love to do. Cool. Uh, yeah. that's awesome yeah. um yeah anything anything else you want to add or like a, a story that you have in mind or no i, I mean i don't i don't think so um cool yeah yeah that's awesome yeah. i love that your your brother was like if there is one thing you should mention is that how jealous you were uh but i think you did right by you know um saying that one of your favorite moment was when he won the walls and, and you were there oh, it was, it was a big cool moment, so yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it's, it is, I guess that's the only thing is, it is really special to have something that my whole family is so involved in and passionate about uh, and, and loves, like, it's, it's such a neat way to stay, to stay connected. And yeah, it's a, it is a pretty cool thing. It was funny, like, when that you asked me, actually, I was kind of like, oh, really? <laughs> because we're like, I'm, I often Rory, you know, people love Rory and my parents, everyone knows my parents. So I was like, <laughs> you know, no, no, no. I was like, well, why is this McDonald's? So that was kind of Oh, funny. right, right. No, no, no. They were, they were all, they were all giving me uh, what I should say or not say. Or oh, really? Open with this story. And I was like, guys, better, you better be nice uh, and, and talk to them, uh, talk about them in a nice way. Um, no, it's nice yeah. to, you know, um, I've talked to, uh, leading drummer, pipe majors, and and also just band members that have you know something interesting. And um, although I didn't know a whole lot about you, um, I knew that you were uh, you know doing research and, and, and being a scientist, and, and you don't hear that often. And I was very curious, especially with um, how does this impact you know playing the pipes? Um, and often, you know, if you look, if you're on the younger side, look at a band and you're like, wow, these guys must all be professionals. They must probably, you know, do this like from, I don't know, nine to five every day and play all the time. But inside a band, you you do have people that have interesting sort of uh, work yeah. or just like things they do outside that is, is unique. So. And I actually think that's one of the things I love about Scottish Power too, is that it's not a band full of um, full-time pipers and drummers. It's it's the majority of the people are doing other things um, and come to band as like a, you know, an escape or something that they're passionate about. Mm-hmm. And I think that's kind of, there's something neat about that, actually. Um, did you, yeah, I, I like that. Did you expect it? Like, did you think, um, uh, you, you know, joining the band, you, 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 did you know that, did you know some people or, or did you think that everyone was like a professional and that's what they were doing for a living? Yeah, I, I had some, I had some sense of it. I actually didn't know a whole lot of people, but sort of knew. Yeah, you know, over the years, you get to know no people. Yeah, you get to know who people are. It's not a, it's not a huge yeah, yeah, um, yeah. world. So you, you, I kind of did have a sense of that before joining, but um, it's been, it's been really nice getting to know everybody in the band. Yeah. Cool, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you know, I don't want to take too much of your time. I know you're, it's family uh, for, you know, this mm-hmm. week at least. So um, thank you for uh, hopping on and, and, and chatting with me. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. <laughs> enjoy the rest of your, uh, what is the afternoon for you? So um, enjoy the rest of yeah. the day. And then, uh, yeah, good luck with the band. Um, and then uh, good luck with, with work as well. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.